James Dutton for Pro Boxing fans. They'd like to join with Dan Aziz. Dan, how are you doing? I'm good, my brother. How's yourself? Very good, thank you. Uh, last time we spoke was just after you won the English title. Yeah. Um, obviously, a little bit of time to look back and reflect on that. Yeah. Let's talk about that again. You said the fight didn't sort of catch fire as you thought it would. Looking back, what would you change? Um, I wouldn't have changed anything, but yeah, for the fans, <laughs> it was probably very boring. I was getting a bit bored in there myself, but um, credit to Azuki again. He's he knows what he's doing. He didn't want to get caught. Um, he was more defensive minded in that fight, so um, yeah, that's why I just didn't catch a light. But I did what I had to do, got the job done. I'm the English champion. You mentioned there you got a bit bored yourself in the ring. How can you discipline yourself to not get frustrated or go in and leave yourself open? Um, it's just, again, just having a strong mind, um, staying focused, because I literally only just watched it like a week ago or something, and I was getting caught with some silly shots because, like I said, I was getting a bit bored, losing focus. Um, but, yeah, it's all experience, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, again, just next time, just keeping strong in the head, listening to your corner and just staying focused. But I'll learn as that come, goes on. So. You mentioned there, I was going to ask you, how important is it to have you know Brian and Corner give you that advice and the information during times of frustration like that? Um, very important because um, Brian's been my coach for a good amount of years now. There's only a few people that I listen to um, and he's one of them. So when he's telling me something, I know, okay, yeah, he's not just saying it for the sake of saying it. Um, so I make sure I lock on and listen to him and try and get what he's telling me to do, get it done. So, yeah. Very quickly, he's been around boxing for a long time. You know, he was at West Ham amateurs, and then obviously yourself. He had a few other guys as well. They've sort of left him. You stuck with him. How important and pivotal has he been to you and your career? Oh, um, he's been so important. Um, obviously, you mentioned you know he's had other fighters and whatnot. But the thing is, I was there before they came. I didn't go to Brian because they were with him. I was there because I knew how um, the qualities he he brought to the table I was a very shit amateur I wasn't a good boxer and yeah I just appreciate um, how far he's brought me on so yeah like there's nothing or no one that would make me um, leave Brian even I could maybe add to my team or whatnot but it wouldn't make me separate from Brian and even me adding that would be at the discretion of if he would want it so you know what I mean me and Brian we've got a very tight bond it goes beyond boxing he's like a father figure to me as well um, boxing it's not just about punching, it teaches you discipline. It's got a lot of life lessons, so you need someone in your corner that you know is going to help you um, learn these kind of things and whatnot. But yeah, now Brian, that's my guy, man. So hopefully, I want to um, do something very, very good in the sport so I can just um, show how, how, like, how good of a trainer he is because he's put in the hours and hours and hours of work for nothing as well. So, um, yeah, I just appreciate him a lot, so, yeah. At the start of your career, when you are picking a trainer, how difficult, but also how important is it to pick the right trainer? Um, when I was, well, with Brian, I started with him when I was doing amateurs. So, it, I didn't go into the pros thinking, oh, I need to find a trainer. Um, I was with Brian in the amateurs. I remember once or twice, I was like, oh, what do you think about me going pro? And he was straight honest, he's like, nah, nah. So, one year, two year, three years, then you thought, okay, yeah, Dan, now you're ready. And then, yeah, we just went together. So, yeah, and the thing is, he had people like Lawrence as well, um, who was training oh, Charlie Edwards as well, and they were going into the pros. They were doing well as well. So it only was right that, yeah, I'll just go with him um, in the pros as well. So You say that you asked him about going pro, were you thinking about it at the time? And he said, no, how frustrating is that for you? And how did you keep your motivation to keep going and see, and that's the end goal? Um, well, in the amateurs, I was trying to, like, I had my goals that I wanted to achieve there. Like, I wanted to win an ABA, so I wasn't really too focused on the pros yet. Like, in my head, I was thinking, if I can't even win that um, ABAs or whatnot, how am I even going to go pro? So that wasn't really in my head. I wasn't frustrated. I just, my main aim was, okay, try and win an ABA and then go pro. But I think my style, as time went on, my style was more suited to the pros and I started to realise that I didn't really know the difference between the pros and the amateurs. I thought it was boxing's boxing. But obviously, as you know, like amateur boxing and professional boxing is two different sports. So um, as I was training longer and longer with Brian, we realised my style wasn't 
was more suited to the pros. Like I would start awful in the amateurs, like first round crap, second round I'll pick up. Then the third round I'll be doing the best, but it's over. So that's when Brian was like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I think you're better suited to the pro. Let's give it a try. So yeah. And even before that, I think we did like some, not unlicensed, but like, um, yeah, it was unlicensed first, like to see how I would be under the lights, you know, people watching and stuff like that. And then after it's like, yeah, okay, let's go pro. So yeah. Back to yourself and your English title. Uh, it's just been ordered that you fight another gym mate, uh, Andre Sterling. It's so dumb, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Oh, oh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, like, come on. Um, fucking, it was, so for my language, but it was hard enough um, fighting Charlie, who was my um, bloody gym, gym mate, but at least he friggin' went off, like, and he was, where was he training? In Loughborough, yeah, like, fucking Andre he's fucking still here like <laughs> every day like I'm seeing him I'm seeing his trainer and do you know what I mean but it is what it is man like his trainer was first like saying yeah Dan you lot you don't need to fight and rest it and I see it's been ordered by the board I'm like no worries and I just won that title so I ain't giving it up for shit so it is what it is well it actually will be a good fight me and Andre we've sparred countless rounds um but yeah, man, he's just putting himself in line of my dream, so I've got to run right through him. Simple as that. So, yeah. How hard is it? Obviously, your opponent, you want to hate him, you want to go and punch your head in until the final bell. Now, how hard is it to get that pump for it when you are seeing him every day, when you're friendly with him? And you know what I'm saying, like, I was just literally, I was training and he just walked past, like, oh, yeah, you're right. I figured, fuck off, man, you're fighting. <laughs> you're you're fighting me, like, piss off, like, I don't want to say hello to you, like, but, yeah, it is what it is, at the end of the day, you got a job done, you got to get a job done, and, fuck it, like, just, we just got to, we're going to get, we're going to get it on, so. It's just business. Um, yeah. It has been also ordered that the winner defends against Ricky Summers. Um, talk about Ricky Summers as a potential opponent, what do you think of Ricky? Um, yeah, Ricky's a decent opponent. I would have rather fought him, to be fair. Um... Yeah, I would have rather. I just would have rather fought him. Um, I think he's got the better resume. See, they're both about the same, but just Andre trains here, so why am I fighting him? Do you know what I mean? I rather, would have rather fought Ricky, but and what's his name? Just come off a loss. Ricky's come off a draw, so it would make more sense for me to fight Ricky. But hey, MTK are just giving Andre just bare opportunities, so I, I can't, I can't, I can't hate. Let, let the guy eat in it. Like you say, they've done the same for you, giving you plenty yeah, of opportunities yeah, as well. So, I ask again. TK, so they have to give me the opportunities, but yeah, like, um, it is what it is. Yeah, Lee's, Lee and MTK, they've um, fulfilled every promise that they 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 gave, they said they would give me, and yeah, I can't ask for a better management company. So, yeah. On the flip side of it, surely the board can't go, oh, they're gym mates, we can't put them it's together. It's their business, they don't care, like, do you know what I mean? It's been ordered and that's what's got to happen. If anything, maybe Andre and his team should have said, yeah, nah, it's a bit awkward, because I, hell, weren't going to give up my title, so, boy, like, yeah, like I said, it'll be a good fight, it'll be, because trust me, Andre will come for it, I'm going to come for it, so it, it won't be boring like uh, me versus Azuki, um, be a good entertaining fight. And finally, we get one prediction from you. Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, two, the rematch. How do you see it going? Um, I don't even know, man. It's, I, I'm going to go two ways. Tyson Fury boxes his head off or um, Wilder lays him out. And it can go either way. But I don't know, man. I just can't. I, I don't know. Wilder's just got that. That, do you know what I mean? That equaliser at any given time. It could be one second before the 12th round or something like So, I don't know. Hopefully, um, Fury brings it back and then we can get a unification between him and Joshua. That would be a bloody good um, fight. So, yeah. Uh, I'm back in Fury. He's a fellow MTK stable mate. He's a UK. He's a Brit. He's one of ours. So, yeah. I'm going to go with Fury. But on paper, I don't know. Dan Aziz, thank you very much for talking to pro boxing fans. We appreciate it. Cheers, man.